It's a celebration of, of music and art and performance, poetry. We bring all the different arts together and mush them all together into a sticky paste for the town to enjoy. Jesus, he said, I've got me a fish here, all right. I've got me the mother of all fishes. <sighs> Down below, Fanula struggled with the line, but the more she struggled, the more tangled she became in it. There must be a hundred people here drinking champagne and celebrating words in winter. How fantastic is that? And here's one of the key organisers, Jen Gray, again. <laughs> Well, I started working with the team uh, about three years ago and I ran Family Day, which is an all-day children's event with workshops and performers and authors, especially tailored for children. And um, we just came on board at the end of last year and this is our first festival as, as a whole. If I buy this, I will eat it all. Uh, then it will be gone. Then I will have nothing. Then I will be... That, and then I, will... I believe you have organised a, a story slam. Well, we, as you know, and with Storytelling Australia, and it's not something we usually do, but it's to support one of our local Green candidates because it is a time of politics, and it's to see a good yarn from people that don't get a chance often to tell a story. Thank you for attending and it is an inaugural event so it's a bit of fun for us but it's all inspired by the fact that um, several years ago I was fortunate to meet the patriarch of the May family, Morris, and uh, I think in a week we celebrate one year since his passing. But I've been a member of Storytelling Australia for over 35 years and it's a fraternity that is devoted to the oral tradition. But when you meet someone like Morris May, who is a natural born storyteller, you're kind of envious and jealous because he does it so effortlessly. But another reason behind our event today is we have a lot young local candidate standing for the Greens, Stephanie Hodgins May. We travelled through the western part, the eastern part of South Africa into the um, uh, around the Drakensberg Ranges and we travelled across the vast expanses of Kruger National Park and as a family we, we trepidatiously got out of the car and, and went for, for a little walk sometimes, always fearful that there'd be a lion or a, or a, or a leopard or, or some critter there ready to, to eat us up. It was so real. The thing that strikes me about landscape is that it's both intensely real and intensely abstract our relationship with it, if you live in it long enough, especially if you've grown up with it, I think, but you can come to places later on, it begins to inform your dreams and your sense of who you are and of how you live, but also your dreams begin to inform your sense of it and its meaning. And that changeover, that sort of interplay across time between yourself and the landscape you're in becomes who you are. Every day, big Brachiosaurus would stick his head in the sky and watch for rain clouds rolling in from the sea. One day, he saw some. Rain clouds, dinosaurs, coming in from the sea. Let's follow the rain clouds to the mountaintop so we can be underneath when they let down their rain, follow me, dinosaurs! <laughs> Annie asked me last week, she said, can you uh, tell a story for five minutes in, the pub in public? And um, it's about earth and environment. I said, okay, I'll tell a Scottish story. Would that be good enough? She said, fine. Uh, then I thought, and actually, the first thing that I thought of was something that my cousin's husband, Walter, said to me last time I was in Scotland. He said, 
Fiona. There's no such thing as bad weather. There's only inappropriate clothing. <laughs> I'm walking along the Williamstown wetlands in the flora and fauna reserve one Sunday morning and I, I see a cluster of people around a, a myporum bush. I go over and have a look and, and there they are, they're, they're admiring a little family group of Baku bantams or little, little Australian native hens. But there's a problem. There's a cat in there stalking the hens. There's a man standing there with a fistful of stones to throw at the cat, to chase it away. And I say, I say, don't do that. Don't throw stones at the cat. I'll go and get it. Wouldn't the lady break the laws and the missing of his mum? Yeah. I thought maybe that put us all in the land and the environment, so I reckon I'd have to give it to Toby. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the normal slam. Now we do have a couple of bottles of wine for the runner-up.